The long-awaited findings into allegations of corruption by Gladys Berejiklian were released today, finding that she and her former flame, Dara Maguire, engaged in serious corrupt conduct by not declaring a conflict of interest between her personal life and her public duties. The pair now join the ranks of other politicians who the ICAC have deemed were corrupt, such as my next guest, former CFMEU leader John Maitland. In the eyes of the ICAC, he too was declared corrupt in 2013. Yet he was an innocent man and spent the best part of a decade trying to prove so until he was finally acquitted just before Christmas last year. The vindicator, John Maitland, joins me along with principal of Macedoni Legal, criminal law expert Sam Macedoni. John and Sam, thank you both so much for your time this evening. John, I want to start with you. What's your reaction after your nine-year fight to clear your name after ICAC said you were corrupt? What's your reaction to seeing yep. Gladys Berejiklian today have serious corruption findings made against her? Let me first of all deal with ICAC. Um, ICAC is not a court. Uh, it's an administrative body. And there's no procedural fairness when you're in front of uh, ICAC. You do not have the right to have legal representation either unless the commissioner says you can also have legal representation. And you can't challenge uh, the merit... You can't have a merits review of mm. uh, the issues before ICAC. So it's a very, very unique body which actually... Uh, is at odds with uh, our legal system and what one would say is the rule of law. So one of mm. the things that is very interesting is that um, Ms Berejiklian, uh, unfortunately for her, has been caught up in what is, uh, as I said, an administrative body. But I have to say I have no sympathy for her because when my... A conviction was overturned and she was asked by the media to comment, she actually said, I think we'll find some other charges for him. So, you know, the, the point here mm. is that Miss Berejiklian is just finding out how horrible this organisation is. It is something which is at odds with Australia's commitment to the rule of law. Yeah. Look, and that's a, an interesting point you raised because um, I interviewed repeatedly the former New South Wales Police Minister, Mike Gallagher. He was uh, named in an ICAC hearing and just when he was named, he had to resign. His career was over as police minister. You know, he's, he, he's now got a, a career doing other work. But his career, his dream job as police minister of New South Wales, he'd been in the police force his whole life, it was over instantly. And he didn't have that support from the Liberal Party to back him in. And he'd only been named by ICAC. And what we heard from the New South Wales Premier Chris Minns today was uh, Chris saying that actually... If you're the subject of investi an investigation or if you're named by ICAC, it shouldn't mean that you resign. This is what Labor Premier Chris Min said. You should be able to continue doing your job. And um, I think that, you know, there might be other reasons that he said it, but I think, Sam, that that is a really important reform that needs to happen because the second this commission names someone, even before any findings have been made at all, and whether or not these findings are, are, are justified, and in the case today I'm arguing they're not justified, but the fact that someone can just be named in ICAC and their reputation is ruined, their career's over, um, is something that should change, and, and, you know, really valuable points made by Chris Minns today, I thought. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, simply being named is uh, being totally shamed. I mean, everyone considers that you're guilty simply because you're being named. It's a bit like in the legal system when you get charged for something, a lot of people think you're guilty without understanding that you're presumed innocent until such time as a court finds you guilty. I mean, ICAC can simply investigate matters and make recommendations. They can't punish anyone. Uh, that is up to the, the legal system system and a court to do that if you can prove to that court that you are corrupt. And in a lot of cases, a lot of people have gone to court only to be found that there was no such finding, no such corruption, and they should never have been found to be corrupt. Sherry, um, mm. if I might just come in again. John, uh, yes. Uh, what of I'm course. going to say is that uh, 
I am still being punished uh, because I'm still considered to be corrupt by ICAC, and yet I've been through the court process and been found not guilty. And so here is another example of the outrageous position mm. that ICAC takes. And, uh, you know, it's something that we need to clean up uh, very quickly. Yes, there is corruption. There's no question about yeah. that. But the rule of law is the most important thing to us. And if there is corruption, then yes, we should root it out, but not in the manner in yeah. which this organisation operates, where, as uh, my colleague has just said, it destroys reputations and you can never recover. Mm, mm, all right. I'm joined by John Maitland, who himself had to battle for nine years to clear his name after corruption finding, and criminal law expert Sam Macedoni. Sam, I want to turn to you again. Um, the point I made at the start of the show is that we are clearly seeing here that there was a breach by Gladys Berejiklian of uh, the Ministerial Code of Conduct. She should have declared a relationship when she was you know, part of the expenditure review committee that was awarding grants to community organisations. But these were, com you know, so, so yes, there was a breach of the ministerial code of conduct, but not corruption, no personal benefit to her, no financial gain for her. And there's no suggestion that these community organisations didn't deserve uh, the grants in, in the first place. Well, it goes without saying that even if she had have declared the conflict that she had a personal relationship with Maguire, that doesn't mean that the, the grants would not have been made. So all of that could have happened. I mean, my personal thoughts are that when ICAC looks at these matters or these allegations of corruption, they should keep it in-house, not make it public until they decide whether there's some corruption corruption or not. If they go to a public hearing because they have uncovered enough evidence to put someone on, you know, on, on their word to, to explain what happened, fine. But up until then, this idea of naming and shaming someone uh, and branding them as corrupt before you even get to hear the evidence is just ridiculous. And in this case, as you said, mm -hmm. look, there was no personal gain. There was no, no interest that she gained at all. The only problem she had was she didn't tell two committees that were looking at a, at a grant that uh, was initiated by Maguire that she had a relationship with him. Um, I mean, you know, um, mm. there's, no, there's no... I can't see why that is corrupt, but I can understand that in the ICAC Act itself, corrupt conduct is uh, defined in such a way that it will catch you out if you do something that is contrary to the interests of the public that you serve. Yeah. Sam, uh, sorry, John, what do you think about this point? You may not like Gladys Berejiklian, but I assume you've had a chance to have a, a look at the report today. This is clearly a breach of the ministerial code and not corruption. And, and, and just to bring in the other point, they said that she should have referred any suspicions she had about Maguire to, the, to ICAC. So she should have tipped off ICAC about Maguire. Well, you think if she had suspicions that he was involved in serious financial misconduct, she would have ended the relationship. I mean, you don't maintain a relationship with someone if you seriously think they are guilty of financial misconduct. And looking at this realistically, well, she didn't need to tip off ICAC, did she? They were already investigating him. I agree with uh, the fact that uh, Gladys should not have been in front of ICAC. I mean, it's just another case of ICAC overstepping the mark. And... We need to understand that this organisation seems to embark upon uh, all sorts of cases just to justify its existence. So I agree that uh, Ms mm. uh, Berejiklian shouldn't have been in front of it, but having already seen what has happened in this case, it demonstrates again what we need to do collectively, and I'm not talking about one side of politics or the other, uh, Mr. Mr Minns or indeed... Uh, Mr Speakman, who's the opposition uh, leader, they both yeah. need to combine and do something about this organisation which has been enormously yes, destructive exactly. to some wonderful people. Some wonderful people. Yes. Dri driving people to the brink of, of uh, well, ending their lives. I mean, it, it, you know, well, it and, has and that I impact spent, on people. I spent two years uh, in jail... And yeah. it was enormous impact on my family. It was a terrible thing for my family to have to experience. And they're the sort of things that happen, uh, and yet I'm innocent of any wrongdoing. 
So we need to have a proper examination claiming, of this. Are you seeking compensation from the New South Wales government for your time in prison, I haven't, John? I haven't embarked upon anything along those lines. I'm actually helping to organise meetings of victims of ICAC so that we can collectively see what can be done to actually uh, rectify some of the very bad things that have happened to a multitude of people. Um, mm. if you, I think there's something like 130 people who have been uh, unfairly uh, dealt with by ICAC. Yeah. And so there is a need for all of those people to come together and that's what we're doing at the present time. We've had one meeting and we intend mm. to have another meeting and we're calling on both sides of, gov uh, both sides of parliament to please do something about this. Please effectively well, it definitely implement needs, it definitely the needs rule reform of law. And it might, and it might get it right in say 50%. I, I don't know the exact ratio, but it might get it right half the time. ICAC, but that's not good enough for the way it destroys people's lives the other half of the time that it gets it wrong.